Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rocket Vulcan TKL Pro. This is an updated version of this keyboard that's been available for a while, but is now available in white, which makes it even more appealing and aesthetically eye-pleasing. This is an unboxing and review video where I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences with this 10 keyless keyboard over the last couple of weeks. The highlights and lowlights of it, the things I like and the things I don't, which I'll admit are very few, because this is a premium keyboard and a nice update to one of my favourites from the last couple of years, and a very nice looking one with optical mechanical switches, obviously some very nice styling. It has Rockat's Easy Shift technology, which is one of the best things around, and this awesome AMO Intelligent Lighting, which is reactive and changes throughout the day in an organic way. More on that later on. Now, as I said, this is a 10 keyless keyboard, which obviously makes it compact. So it's great if you want more mouse space and you aren't bothered about having the numpad on your desk. It also has a nice setup in terms of it being very low profile, which you see it go through. So if you've not seen the Vulcan keyboards before, they have a very low keyboard design then this raised keycap, which lets through a lot of RGB light bleed, and some very thin, again raised, key housing for the keycaps to sit on top of, which essentially means that you have a easy, cleanable keyboard in theory, because everything is raised up, so you don't need to take the keycaps off in order to get underneath to give it a clean. Just throw some compressed air over there, or even run a vacuum over the top, and you'll get that clean easily. And I think these keycaps should stand up to the test of time. Now, when I did the original Rockat Vulcan 122, I believe that was in white, I gave it to a friend and his is still holding up nicely now. And that's been quite some time. So I don't think these keycaps will mar over time. As you see in the box, you get the keyboard and a detachable USB-C cable, which on one end has a little thing to let you know that it's for your keyboard, which is convenient when it's plugged in. And you can see here already just how low profile this keyboard is and how it sits on the desk. Now, obviously it doesn't come with a wrist rest and it is adjustable in height. I'll show you the feet in a minute. I really like this design because of how flat it sits on the desk. It really helps with preventing your hands from being raised in a way that's gonna hurt your wrists over time. So if you have struggle with pain in your wrists when using a keyboard, you'll find that a low profile design like this is excellent. And I really like it with something like the Logitech G915 TKL, which is my usual favorite. And this is very similar, but you can see you can adjust height and raise it up a little bit if you wish. But I like using it personally quite flat. You'll also note there's a large amount of rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't slip and slide around on the desk. And obviously having that removable USB-C cable gives you the flexibility to change that out and change the overall look and feel of it as well. But from these various angles, you can see the raised keycap design while I was talking about this sort of transparent housing around the bottom. You can see a hint of those red key switches, which are the Titan optical switches. So they're designed to react very quickly. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then the volume wheel on the right hand side. There's also a button next to the volume wheel, which acts as a mute button. Unfortunately, that isn't a multi-action key. Like with, for example, the Steel Series Apex lineup that has a multi-action multimedia key there. Instead, your multimedia playback buttons are hidden in the F keys. Now I'm going to be quiet for a minute so you can hear a sample of the keystrokes. I'm also going to do a video separately that you can hear all of these sounds and more and I'll link to that in the description or it'll just be the key sounds so if you want to hear more of that then please check that out. One of the things I found when using it is that it's quieter than the original Vulcan. It has far less ping in it. There are still some pings in some of the keys if you hit them really hard but for general day-to-day -day typing and for gaming on it's actually been very quiet. And because it uses these Titan optical switches, they're guaranteed up to 100 million keystrokes. And they also have a 1.4 millimeter actuation with a linear response. So they actuate really quickly and easily. You just need a gentle press on there and it responds really well in gaming. I also found that the key strokes weren't so loud that they've been picked up on my microphone when I'm recording clips from a gameplay channel. So I'm playing on there. My mic just doesn't pick it up, which is a good sign for me and an indication that this is a reasonably quiet keyboard not obnoxiously loud. As I was saying earlier, 
Obviously, the removable USB-C cable allows you to upgrade, so you can change the look and aesthetic. Here I have one from KBD Fans, which is an aftermarket USB-C cable, which has some very fancy finish on it. This is not cheap, but if you're looking for a way to change the standard cable and you want something that looks particularly nice, this is a coiled design to it, and it is an option. They're available in various different colours and finishes and they really had a nice aesthetic to your desk and change up the look and feel of it. Obviously this is a premium keyboard, the Vulcan TKL Pro will set you back around £149 and about the same in dollars as well, so it's not cheap. But you are getting a premium device here in my mind. It has some fantastic aesthetics with that brushed aluminium back plate. A really nice ergonomic look and feel to it. It's very comfortable to use, it's quiet. And you'll note a number of other highlights as I go through these close-ups as well. For example, that plus button on the caps lock is for the Easy Shift technology, which I'll show you in Rocket software at the end. But if you don't know already, it essentially allows you to set a secondary layer of key press actions within the keyboard, which you can activate with a single press on the Easy Shift button. This is a brilliant addition to the keyboard and all Rocket products. And the bottom right on the directional arrows, you'll also know that you can press the function key and change the RGB lighting with a press on there turning it up and down and also adjusting the FX. And there are other actions hidden in the other keys on the secondary layer as well. For example, F9 to F12 has the media playback buttons that I was talking about earlier on. One of the things about the RGB lighting on this keyboard is it's very bright. I found that the RGB is very bright, so bright that sometimes at night, if I'm in a darkened room, I have to turn it down, which I think is a good thing rather than a bad thing. And that RGB is also very responsive and interesting on the eye. And I'll show you more on what I mean about that later on, but it's very difficult to capture it because it changes organically throughout the day. Here you can see a close up of those Titan optical switches or Titan switch optical, as Rocket likes to call them. As I said, 1.4 mil actuation. So they actuate very, very quickly and with a linear key press. So you don't have a clicky or overly tactile response from them. They just give you the action as you'd like when you're pressing them. A very satisfying click action and not too loud. And also I found that the stabilizers on things like the space bar are reasonably decent actually. I haven't found any excessive wobble. As I said, there is a slight ping in some of the keys, but only if you're mashing them very aggressively. So if you're an aggressive gamer that likes to really smash their keyboard when they're playing, you might find it a bit more noisy, but I personally didn't. I'll show you a bit more of a sample of what I mean in a second, but here you can see some of the wonderful RGB lighting and the way it glows around that transparent housing. As standard, the Vulcan TKL Pro has this AMO organic intelligent lighting, which basically responds and changes throughout the day. You can see it changing colors here, and it's very different to other keyboards where you have various different schemes. You still do have adjustable schemes, and I'll show you those in the software in a minute, but the way it responds is interesting because it can just be doing this sort of color changing at one moment, and then another moment you'll find that the keys are responding to your keystrokes and changing color in a reactive way. And this is one of my favorite parts of the Rockout keyboard lineup is the way that reactive lighting works and the way that it changes throughout the day and just gives you a nice sort of glow. It's a pleasant RGB light and you don't need to mess around with a lot in order to get looking nice. And I think that's really good. The raised housing on it also allows for a lot of RGB bleed onto the back plate. And a really nice shine. And because the keycaps are white, you also obviously can see the lettering really well. Even when the lighting is turned off, you will have seen from clips earlier and on in the video, that you can see the lettering on there really easily and you don't need to worry about darkened spots. One thing of note though, is you'll note that the secondary layer of actions, so for example, the FX buttons on the lighting keys on the directional arrows, you'll see that they aren't cut out as such or etched. So they are less visible perhaps with the RGB lightings turned on. You'll see some of it here as a 
turn the lighting up and down and that when you turn the lighting up the main key lettering is a lot more visible and and the accents on it aren't easy to see but when the secondary layer isn't so easy this is a minor problem i'm trying to pick holes in something which is otherwise fantastic and i really struggle to find issue with it i think my main gripe perhaps is that the multimedia playback buttons are hidden under function keys because that means you have to press fn and then f9 to f12 if you want to pause play music Perhaps they could have put some dedicated keys by the volume wheel instead. I've seen that with other keyboard designs and it's much easier and more pleasant or work on something like a Steel Series multimedia playback button where it's just one button press to change through a variety of things. But anyway, a fantastic keyboard. And now I'm going to show you the software. Here we are within Rockat's Swarm software. And you'll see on the initial tab, for the Vulcan TKL Pro that you have some basic settings, one of which is you can change the sound feedback, which basically gives you a virtual sound within your headphones when you start typing. For example, if I change it to click sound, it then gives me that. If I change it to typewriter, theme sound, sci-fi sounds, Obviously very gimmicky and not something for me, but an interesting quirk. The other one I'm going to go into quickly is the organic lighting. So you can see it's set to wave at the moment. We also have an intelligent lighting system, which, as I said, just changes throughout the day. You'll see it says it down here that it changes organically, change depending on your behavior and what you're doing. Uh, one of the nicest things about it is that it occasionally goes to a reactive mode where the key press is changed. Unfortunately, I've not managed to capture that on footage because it just happens so randomly. But you can also obviously change through a number of other things. You see already that I have wave. You have a snake where a colorful snake goes across your keyboard. Fully lit where you can choose either from a theme where it's different colors. So you'll see, for example, red on the left, orange on the right, have a glow across the entire keyboard. Or you can go into heartbeat mode where it's pulsing from the left. Again, you can choose the theme or you can set a custom color in each of the sort of sections. You can have a breathing setup, fade effects, ripple effects, which goes across the keyboard again, either in the theme or in your colors you've chosen. And then you can go through and you can select zones so you can do per key RGB illumination. So you'll see, for example, at the moment, essentially you've got most of the keyboard in a sort of whitish blue hue. And then I have WASD lit up in red, but you can select other keys. So I'm just going to select these three, for example, and then change them to green, pink, apply. And then you have pink keys over here. So you do have per key RGB illumination. You can just drag and select areas. So you can drag and select a function area, for example. You can do it to set from the main area here. You do have to apply every time you do this, though. So it is a bit of a faff when you're making the changes initially. But to be honest, I really like the well, AMO intelligent lighting. That's my favorite anyway. Now, the key setup. Obviously, this is 10 keyless, so you don't have your numpad on the right hand side, but you do have access to be able to create macros. So you can see that you have macro options. So when you select various different keys on the keyboard, you'll notice that you have two layers of options. You have game mode function and easy shift function. Now, the game mode function works in two ways, essentially. This is what the button press is going to be when you're using it. But you'll also know on the right hand side that there is a game mode on the page down button. So if you press a function key and that, it will then put it into game mode. This will be lit up and then the game mode will be activated. The reason this is important is because on the caps lock button, you'll note the game mode defaults caps lock to easy shift instead of caps lock. And what this does is that gives you access to then the easy shift layer of key presses. So if we take, for example, A as the letter, you'll notice the standard is A on both. But what you can do is you can set a macro. So I have set a test macro up here, for example, I'm going to drop into the easy shift function on the, here. Now, when I click apply, that is obviously applied to that, put it into game mode so that we're now ready to game. 
And then when essentially if I take notepad just to demonstrate this purpose is if I'm typing on A and pressing A, that's just what happens. But if I press the easy shift button on A, I now have test written. That's what's on my macro. So every time I press that, a test is written out. Obviously, you can put in whatever you want. But essentially, this allows you to set up a secondary action. It doesn't have to be a macro. It can be any of the other ones. You can choose, for example, to have a hotkey set up. So you could have control and R, for example. I don't know what that would do, but let's just, I'm just demonstrating the various different key presses you could have. You could even use that a secondary layer as a additional key press. You could change your DPI levels, for example, by using that, which is an interesting highlight. If you're using it alongside a Rock App product, you can have it as multimedia buttons. So you could change your multimedia keys if you're not happy with them being up here. We could put an extra track down on A. Then all you'd need to do is to hold the easy shift button, the caps lock, and then press A, and then you'd be skipping music rather than having to reach across the other side of the keyboard. So the, the various different options here, and you'll see that the majority of those keys on this bit section of the keyboard have the secondary action. So not every key on the keyboard does. You'll note, for example, all the keys on the right hand side don't. So you can't remap every key but you can remap most of the keys that you'd use during a gaming session. So like the WASD and the number buttons, for example, but not spacebar and not like the letter M. So it's not a perfect system. It doesn't work across the entirety of it, but what it does do is gives you a lot more access to a lot more programmable customization and a lot more things that you can do, which makes it potentially really interesting, I think. The last thing I wanted to do is demonstrate some of that reactive lighting that I was talking about because I have managed to get it captured now and I just want to demonstrate just how good this looks. This is just a sample of it. There is a lot more in the way it responds and the way it changes and I think it's really hard to do this justice but it's one of the fantastic highlights of this keyboard. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.